morning. I'm going to apologize for my froggy voice today. Uh, I'm not contagious. I just have sinus, uh, people with sinus trouble. So you'll have to listen. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll do my best to uh, project my voice as we begin our worship. Today, of course, is Palm Sunday and uh, the beginning of Holy Week. And we're going to celebrate uh, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem as he also enters our hearts and lives, not only today, but every day. And what it means to say Jesus is our king. We'll focus on that today. Also, of course, this is Holy Week, and so you have uh, services this coming week, uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, 6 o'clock, uh, Good Friday, 6 o'clock. And, of course, the Easter services would be next Sunday. And uh, Pastor Andrew will be with you. He's coming back uh, tomorrow. And so he will be uh, leading your worship over the next uh, period of time. So uh, we uh, anticipate uh, his return. So again, today, God's blessing as we celebrate Palm Sunday. And uh, we invite you to please stand. And we're going to have uh, a little procession as we sing our opening hymn. With palm branches, okay, let's see.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always proceeds and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. The Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants, and he sees that their power is gone and that there is none remaining bond or free. Then he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this in, mi in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount of what is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent, sent went away and found it just as they had told them. And as they were tie, untying the colt, the owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the, on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please join in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. The God, the Son of God, who is Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Please be seated for the sermon hymn.
Christ and the love of God and the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, certainly this is a day the Lord has made. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to Easter. But before that, we need to understand even more fully the importance of Easter as we are led up to it by Holy Week. How many of you enjoy parades? Man, I love parades. When I was five or six years old, my grandparents would take me down to the Illinois Central Railroad Station in Fort Dodge, Iowa. This would be in the summertime, and we would be able to watch the circus train being unloaded. This was the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. We were able to view all of the animals coming off the train, you know, off the cars, and, and the clowns were, of course, all dressed, and, and the trapeze artists, and so on and so forth. And they would have a huge parade. Any of you see a parade like that ever? Circus parade? Well, you guys, uh, you should have been born in Iowa. <laughs> but it was an exciting time. And my grandparents lived right on the route where this grand processional of circus people, animals, and so on, would go to the grounds where they would set up the tent. Now, as I would watch this parade, what do you think was my favorite kind of animal that you just don't see in Iowa, not even in this country? What, would, what was the animal you think I was most excited about seeing? Elephants. Oh boy, you guys are right on today. Elephants, yeah. Oh, they were just overwhelming to me. And there would be people riding on the elephants, you know. It was a grand and glorious sight. In fact, the neat thing about it all was that right across the street from where I lived was this huge, it's just acres. You lived on the edge of town. And this is where the circus would set up. And I'd watch these elephants as they would pull these, these heavy ropes tied to these posts, and they would pull up the tent, the big top of the three tents. It was quite a sight. I still love parades to this day. Not so many as there used to be. Well, on that first Palm Sunday, we had a parade. Jesus. Jesus was the focal point of the parade and what animal was the focal point of that parade? The donkey, right. Not quite the elephant that I had witnessed, but the donkey. Remember Jesus said to his disciples, go into the city ahead of you, you will find a, a donkey there, a colt tied with a donkey. Bring this to me. And if anybody says anything to you, tell them what? The Lord has need of it. Wow. How would you like to be told in your life, the Lord has need of you? Well, you've already been told that. You've been told that in baptism. You've been set apart by God for a grand and glorious task, and now we have this donkey. What's the significance you think of the donkey in this parade? Well, great significance, really. First of all, it was prophesied in Zechariah. The prophet of old said, in speaking of the Messiah to come, he will come to you on a donkey into the city of Jerusalem. And notice Jesus didn't come on a chariot with horses. He came on a donkey, a symbol of peace. And the donkey represented humility. The suffering servant. There's a lot of imagery there. I mean, this could be a whole sermon in itself as the Lord comes to you and me and says, I have need of you. But you know the rest of the story. You know what happened as the crowds gathered. You know, Lazarus had just been raised from the dead. People had experienced and witnessed all these miracles of Jesus, they were overwhelmed. And they just couldn't wait to see him, to touch him. 
to give him thanks and praise and adoration. But this was the start of a long procession we call holy. The crowd who gathered on that first Palm Sunday we're not sure what they were thinking in their heart. They were overwhelmed to see the king, their king, Jesus. They didn't fully understand, like you and I fully understand today, this side of the cross, okay? That means we look back and we see the cross and we see the open tomb, right? Well, these folks didn't see all that yet. And they were just overwhelmed because of Jesus' miracles and his power and his might and his authority as he spoke to the religious leaders of the day. Something very exciting, something very unexpected was about to happen. They saw Jesus as their king. And when they were thinking king, they were thinking earthly king. You know, someone who would come and rule over them, get rid of the Romans, get rid of the oppressors, reestablish the Davidic kingdom of the Old Testament, where there would be peace and prosperity. Oh, for that time to come again, I'm sure they were yearning for it. And they saw, they saw Jesus as the one who would bring it about. But little did they know that Jesus' kingdom would extend far beyond Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. But how far did the kingdom of God extend throughout the world? Throughout time and eternity. They didn't have that picture. You and I have it today. And when we call Jesus the Lord our King, we're looking at Him in a far more overwhelming and encompassing manner. He's the ruler of all and continues to rule even today. Let's look today, just briefly on this Palm Sunday, at our King, our King Jesus, who comes into our hearts, who sets up his kingdom, and finally takes us home. Let's listen to those three thoughts today as we worship on this Palm Sunday. Our King Jesus comes into our hearts. Well, he came into our hearts, he came into our lives, first of all, to pay the price that was demanded for the forgiveness of our sins, right? And that price was his perfect life, his innocent suffering and death. Jesus had to die. Even though the people around him didn't really like to hear that, God had a plan set in motion from the beginning of time. Knowing that man needed to be rescued from the hell of his sin, God took over. God stepped in. He filled the breach. In fact, Jesus, God, man, took our place. So our king comes into our lives to take our sin upon himself, that our sin may be forgiven. And also, he comes into our life we recognize this, don't we, that he conquered death. That's another hallelujah, praise God today in this Palm Sunday because Jesus not only comes to us because of God's love for us and his desire to forgive us, but he also opens up to us victory over death. Remember the words of Jesus, even though you die, yet shall you live. Death no longer has hold over you. We celebrate our life today on Palm Sunday, but not just our physical life here, but our eternal life with God. We are more than conquerors in Christ who has saved us. Our King comes to us. It's personal. And we respond through prayer and praise and thanksgiving. We're here today to be reminded, Jesus, you're our King. And you're still ruling, even though the world may not see it nor we may understand it, yet he is ruling. This is his world. Not only does he come in a personal way into our hearts to make us his very own children, but he also comes to set up his kingdom. 
You know, in that circus parade that I so much enjoy, by the way, I have to tell you this, when I was in Sarasota, Florida, this was a number of years ago, there is a museum there called the Ringling Museum. I don't know, has anybody, have you been to it? Woo! Wow. Well, I went there and there was this huge picture. It must be like three feet by two feet. It's, it's the uh, circus, uh, the railroad station where all of the uh, animals and so on are getting off. I have that downstairs framed. Wow, I just love it. Just love it. That circus procession, that end result, of course, was to be performance and, and entertainment. But this procession on Palm Sunday that Jesus led was not about performance or entertainment. It was about life, human life that God so valued that he sent his one and only son to establish, secondly, his kingdom. Remember in the Lord's Prayer, what do we pray? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does that mean, thy kingdom come? Now you might think, for example, that probably means what? That heaven's on its way, thy kingdom come. But the kingdom of God is really the rule, God's rule, in the hearts and lives of his people. God's kingdom, we're not waiting for it. It's already here. We are members of God's kingdom. He rules in our hearts and our lives. What does that mean, he rules? Well, what does a king do, by the way? What do you think? Give me some ideas. I'm doing all the talking. I'm going to run out here in a minute. Um, give me some ideas. What does a king do? What? I'm sorry? He provides for provides. you. Provides, yes. Provides for a subject. Jesus provides for us. Not only everything we need to drink, house, home, wife, children, fields, cattle, all our goods, but he provides what? Our spiritual needs as well. What does the king also do? Provides? Protects. Protects, right. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He was tempted in every way that we are, yet he didn't sin. We have that power in Christ. We really do. To resist sin and temptation. And we've all experienced that. We've walked away from it. Haven't we walked away? It doesn't mean we always do. Lord, be with me. Jesus, give me strength. Help me. Get this out of my mind. I don't want to start. I don't want to be thinking this way, God. Rescue me. <laughs> and he does. So think of it. The king protects. The, thing, the king provides. The king encourages. The king is there no matter what ever happens, he's there. Earthly kings, well, they come and go. Earthly kings have their ups and downs. Jesus never has an up or down. He fought the good fight. Just like the apostles Paul mentioned to Timothy in his own personal life, I fought the good fight, I finished the course, I kept the faith, there's laid up for me heaven, all because of the one who fought the good fight for him and for you and for me. Jesus. Jesus has come to set up his kingdom, his rule in our hearts. He does that, secondly, how? Through all through the power of his Holy Spirit. He sets us apart. We read in John 16, 13, he, the Spirit, will guide you in all truth. Well, who is the truth? Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth, and life. So God works in our hearts and lives through his Holy Spirit. We're never alone. God never expects us to live out our lives apart from him. He doesn't say, okay, I've told you what to do, now go do it. Uh, I hope it works out for you. No, he's with us all the way. He never turns away. He's always the way. And we could all testify to that today. His Holy Spirit. The Spirit also in 2 Corinthians 3, the Spirit gives us life. Not only physical life for now and this day and this moment, for spiritual life now and forever. 
The Spirit leads us into all truth. The Spirit gives us life. Jesus, our King, comes to set up his kingdom. One of the expressions that I often like to use uh, in working with Christian churches is simply this, that God's kingdom may come. I, I, I think that's so important because we're a part of bringing that rule of Christ into the world. In other words, we are his witnesses. God just doesn't, you know, kind of unilaterally make some kind of decree and through the power of his word alone things happen although that can god says no you are my ambassadors i want to make myself known to others through you by what you say by what you do by how you live god's kingdom come and his will be done you know, Easter provides a tremendous opportunity, I think, for the Christian church to be very aggressive in its outreach. I know we're under attack today, the Christian church, the Christian community, Christians in general. It's a battle. Everything from, you know, just absolutely seeming a total destruction of the Ten Commandments. And we're up against it because God's will and way will be done. He'll get it done. But what an opportunity this Easter to invite someone to come and worship with you. To celebrate the life that we have that God has given us through his son. To know that even death cannot hold us. That Jesus is our victorious Savior and theirs as well. Wouldn't it be great if half of this congregation, just say half, maybe we'll say a third, maybe we'll say a fourth, Bring your family to church next Sunday. And not say, well, I'll come to church if you like, but whether to say this, right? I'll pick you up. I'll bring you with me. And then we'll go out and eat or we'll do something. But what an opportunity. And if you can't do that or it's not possible, at least this week in sharing with people, you know, how's your week look? What are you going to do? Hey, I'm ready to celebrate my victory over death. I'm ready to... I'm ready to say, because Jesus lives, I live also. That's what we can do this week. We can be part of that kingdom that God has set up. And then thirdly, our king comes to bring us home. To bring us home. Remember the words of the people there as they shouted and praised Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. What a, what a tremendous testimony. Did they really know what they were saying? <laughs> Sounds to me a little like the message of the angels on that first Christmas Eve, doesn't it? Glory to God in the highest and peace to His people on earth. That seems to be a consistent message that God has and wants to bring to people everywhere throughout all time and eternity. Yes, that's all about heaven. When you think of those words, peace and glory, heaven is our home, and Jesus came to bring that to us. And it all had to happen this way. As he entered Jerusalem, as he was scourged and scorned by the people, as he was so misunderstood, as his disciples deserted him, as the crowd shouted, crucify him. As he was nailed to the cross on Calvary. As he died there and said in his final word, Father, my spirit, it is finished. What was finished? God's plan of salvation to save people. The cost of for sin had been covered through the death of God himself. Hard concept to understand. Because Jesus was the God-man. Heaven was being prepared for us that day. As the earth changed, as darkness overcame, as earthquakes happened. God accepted the sacrifice of his son. 
Well, that was Jesus. That was his work. And that's our gift today as we recognize our King. This morning, by God's grace, on this side of the cross and resurrection, we understand by faith that heaven is our home. May God's peace and the blessing of Jesus and his victory help us to recognize every moment of our life that we have won our victory assured. Heaven our home because of our Savior and our King, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We now ask you to uh, join with us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of Palm Sunday, of the opportunity we have to recognize Jesus as the King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray for the church as it observes this holy week around the world, that all people come to see in Christ alone the Redeemer of the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all nations, that conflicts cease and that the kingdom of God come to bless our world. Lord, in your mercy, and as we anticipate the celebration of Holy Week and Easter, we pray for our families and the people closest to us. Grant that we share with them our faith in Christ and live together as God's holy and thankful people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who have special needs of healing, of care, of concern, and of need. Be with them and use us as your instruments of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, and into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we now have the opportunity to gather our offerings this morning and bring them forward to the Lord's altar. We do give thanks to God for His mercies every day. And this morning on this Palm Sunday, we have the opportunity to receive the blessed Holy Sacrament of Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and the sure and certain hope of heaven. May God prepare our hearts to receive this precious gift, Jesus Himself. Amen. Please stand as we continue our service. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us in all creation. Above all, we give you thanks for the boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, so that we may be one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. body of your Lord Jesus. Take and drink the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus, given into death for all your sins. Take and eat the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus, given for you, the body of Christ. Take and eat the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus, the body of Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, his precious body given for you. The body of Jesus. God's peace and the blessing of Jesus be with you guys every day. The body of Jesus. The body of Jesus given for you.
And now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith, the life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The true body of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world for you. God's peace and the blessing of Jesus be with you guys today. Take and eat the true body your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. This is the body of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. His precious body given for you on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus, given into death for all your sins. The body of Christ, the body of Jesus, given for you. Take and eat the true body of your Lord Jesus, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The true body of Jesus, given for you. The true body of Jesus, God's Son, given for you. The body of Christ for you. Now may this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and keep you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Amen.
Let us stand and sing, O Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Beautiful Savior, King of all.